four, three, two, one, and then there's always a little lag. <sighs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another fun episode of the Will and Mill Comedy Club presents the Hickory, the Drunk, and Under Quarantine show. Uh, tonight, we have a very special show planned for you. Um, we've got a great guest lined up. It's been another long week of being stuck in quarantine. Uh, we hope that you all out there are staying safe, having fun, making the best of it that you can. Uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce my co-host, uh, the founder of the Woolen Mill Comedy Club, the only comedy club in Vermont that has never claimed to be the only comedy club in Vermont. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Colin Doyle. Ciao, buonasera. How's everybody doing tonight? Good to be here, Woolen Mill Comedy Club, going in on uh, day 70-something, Quarantina. Um, you know, I've been thinking a little bit about, you know, where, how this thing has changed. Uh, I don't know if, a guy, if you guys saw the, the news story early on. There was a landlord in Brooklyn. His name was Mario. And for the month of April, he decided to forgive 85 uh, rents. He had 85 apartments in Brooklyn. And he said, you know what? Don't worry about your rent. Focus on your family. Focus on your health. And, um, you know. Don't worry about the rent. Uh, I'm wondering like how this story is going to evolve. You know what I mean? Because like that was like April. And then like, I don't know, maybe he was like, you know, something with May. But now like June's coming up, like July, people don't pay. You're going to hear like another story that's going to be like, Italian American landlord broke 85 kneecaps in one afternoon <laughs> as he sought rent <laughs> for six months of back payment. You're like, you know? Like, I just can't wait to see how this is. Like, they're like, miss the generosity. He's like, look, God's been good to me. All right. You know, I want everyone to be fine. Like, month six, he's like, give me my friggin' rent. I'm not messing around. I got the bat here. All right. Because <laughs> it's funny. That's how all New Yorkers get when they want to get tough. All New Yorkers become Italian Americans, you know? Like, uh, it, it's like, you know, everybody says Italian Americans have an attitude, and we do. And it's so good that, like, the city of New York just adopted it, you know? You'll be at, like, somewhere, and someone will be like, no, listen, you stay there, all right? You stay right there. I'm going to figure out this falafel business, all right? <laughs> That's just, like, some random Chinese guy on the corner. <laughs> and I... Uh, <laughs> Uh, New York's retail's not doing well. You know, they're having a lot of different things. Macy's having a trouble. Um, uh, Neiman Marcus. I, I, I don't know about you, Hickory, but like growing up, like I thought JC Penney's was fancy. Like in the, <laughs> in, in like the world of department stores, I was like, JC Penney's, that's some good stuff, <laughs> you know? And then it's like, I like moved to New York and I'm like, wait, you mean like, you know, I'm like, you know, to me it was like, JC Penney's, you know, I mean, maybe JC Penney's is better than Kohl's. I don't know. They're kind of neck and neck. But then you have like Macy's is a little bit better than that. And I'm like, what's better than Macy's, you know? And it turns out like Neiman Marcus is better than Macy's. <laughs> <laughs> and like also like Bloomingdale's is like much better than Macy's, you know? Or JC Penney's. But they're all in trouble. Um, uh, I, uh, I think it's sometimes funny, like you hear about like, you know, places like Macy's, like the Macy's today, today in New York built, a, I think like the 1860s, it's still the biggest department store in the world. No one's ever built a bigger one. And, you know, a lot of that was built by like Italian immigrants that came over and they called them human steam shovels, you know, digging the tunnels and stuff like that. And, like, I know like a lot of immigrants came to America for like a better life. But like, but how bad was your life in like Southern Italy when you're like underneath the Hudson River with a steep, like a shovel? <laughs> you're like, boy, I'm sure glad we left Positano for this, huh? Boy, what did they think? We were a bunch of schmucks over there? Bunch of suckers? I think it's, um, I think it's funny though, because uh, I, I saw a cousin of mine 
uh, who lives in Massachusetts recently, and we were talking about, you know, all the craziness that's going on and the corona and all this thing. And I said, you know, I think Vermont's really doing well with this whole thing, you know, and, um, you know, and the thing is, is we, we have been, you know, I know that the numbers are fluctuating and it seems like they might be going up, but we've been down. Last week, we only had one hospitalized case in the entire state for three quarters of a million people. That's phenomenal, in my opinion. A lot of people are, are, are doing well. But the thing is that I would like to say about Vermont is that we're doing well, despite the fact that we got people coming from Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York, Rhode Island, everywhere in the country, people are coming here from the highest contaminated places. You're coming to Vermont. And then we still have managed to keep the numbers low, despite all of these assholes coming here. <laughs> I think that's impressive. I think that's a. I think that's pretty pretty impressive. Um, but uh, I'd just like to make one last round, and then we'll get the show going. But the thing is, what I don't understand is this whole thing with the mask, the mask, the mask, the mask, the mask. How do we not have enough? mass in this country okay <laughs> we used to build a plane every day and fly it over to germany to bomb them during world war ii we built the submarine and launched it every week heading towards the south pacific now in 2020 we can't make mass we don't have mass it's like i'm living in idiocracy which i watched last night if you guys haven't seen it theme of that movie is read a book uh we're gonna uh <laughs> We're going to get this show moving right along. Uh, our next uh, performer uh, always uh, never ceases to amaze me um, with, uh, with the unbelievably underwhelming things that uh, he's uh, able to accomplish on a weekly basis. So uh, without further ado, we're going to kick it to you, Hickory, the drunk and underwhelming. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Hickory the Drunken Underwhelming. Tonight, I'm here to show you a few minor feats of magic. The first one, however, will require a napkin. Ordinary bar napkin here. The first trick will be I'll fix myself a beverage. Well, uh, the next one will be, I will take out my wallet here, which Colin has made fun of me for not having much in, but look at that, there's a, there's a whole dollar bill in there this time. That's, uh, that's great, we like to see that. And uh, we'll show up because Hickory might've been drinking earlier before the show and forgot to bring himself a coin. Uh, so, I take this dollar bill and it becomes a coin. Now this is a 50 cent piece. So as you guys will see that the exchange rate on magic isn't very good. It's uh, it's not a get rich quick scheme by any means. So you guys something cool. Make this coin disappear, ready? And as you can see, a coin is just absorbed into my body. <laughs> Not only did it melt down through the drink, it melted down through the napkin as well. So let me finish this off. I'll take that. Show you guys something cool here. Here. Ready? You guys can see that? Yeah. Yep. Well, it popped right through there. Here, right, let's try that one again. We just uh coin right in the glass there. Right through the bottom. That's pretty wonderful. I'll put a napkin in there. Let's try something else here for a second. 
I was going to require a couple napkins. Now, my beautiful assistant said, Hickory, don't you be wasting these napkins. Uh, men will kill each other at a department store for these right now. I said, yeah, they probably cost more than the whiskey that I... <laughs> we're going to do here. We're going to try to make this coin disappear. No oh, shit. Yeah, let's try one more time. You ready? Well, fuck, it didn't work for the coin, but the salt shaker's gone. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, it's almost my time, but we'll try one last one here. Take this coin. Some of you may be asking what no. hands empty, no sleeves. The coin was in the app. Thank you guys. That's my time. I'm Hickory the Drunken Underwhelming. Stay safe. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, it never ceases to underwhelm. <laughs> <clears throat> the underwhelming, the always drunk, picker. <laughs> oh, thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, that so, was a wonderful little piece of coin magic you did there, Hickory. Yeah, I, uh, I'm always impressed. I got to be honest. I'm always impressed. Um, and and, uh, and not, nothing different this week. Um, I appreciate that. So uh, what do you think? Uh, Want to go ahead and introduce our next guest? Yeah, let's keep this show on the road, my friend. Uh, introducing our guest of the week. A very, very funny man. Uh, you can find him on his podcast, at McTaggart Attack. Uh, he is a Vermont Comedy Outlaw original. He is the two-time, two-time Thunderdome champion and still the hardcore comedy champion of Vermont. Welcoming to the stage, Mr. Kevin McTaggart. First of all, um, it's the hardcore comedy champion of the universe. I, I didn't Not mean to offend you, sir. I'm sorry. I mean, I sent you this stuff weeks in advance. How the hell did you screw this up? <laughs> oh my God. Anyway. So that, this, this whole thing, I have so many thoughts on this whole Corona, COVID-19 pandemic Palooza thing, whatever the fuck it's called. Like social distancing, you know, stay six feet away from people. I feel like I've been doing that my entire life anyway. I mean, I feel like the universe has been training for training me for this moment my entire life. Social distancing. Stay six way, stay six feet away from people. Absolutely. Sure. <laughs> Especially in Vermont, because most of them don't bathe. <laughs> I mean, honestly. It's just, speaking of bathing, like washing your hands is now a thing, but washing our hands should have always been a thing. <laughs> like they had to put out like commercials and, and social media posts about how to like wash your hands. I'm like, if you're a grown adult who doesn't know how to wash your hands, you deserve whatever fate comes your way. <laughs> I mean, seriously, if you Kids, kids is one. Kids need to learn how to wash their hands, especially if their parents don't know how to wash their hands. You should <laughs> at least save the children from their parents' stupidity. But it's just like if if they don't know, if you don't know how to wash your hands, then then whatever. It's it, you deserve whatever the fuck happens. Oh my fucking god! It's just it's 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 just just ridiculous. I, I, I and like masks, masks. Like I I wasn't 
too keen on wearing a mask, but I have to give it up for Trump because every public appearance he's had at like hospitals or factories or whatever, he's not wearing a mask. So I'm like, All right, <laughs> I'm gonna wear a mask now, <laughs> gonna do that. And I hope he never wears a mask, ever. <laughs> I'd be fine with that. If he and Pence just don't wear masks, it'd be fine. We're better off. I almost don't want Biden to wear a mask, but he's got dementia already, so we're fine with that. <laughs> Biden, Biden. I, I, I was in Boston, like, back in February, walking around. And um, I wanted to do the Freedom Trail, and I saw, like, all these people there. And I'm like, wow, the Freedom Trail must be popular in Boston. But no, it was the Bernie rally. <laughs> you know, when there, there was like 10,000 people there. I'm like, And then it was like, what, two days later, um, all the Democrats made the Voltron Biden monster <laughs> to gang up on Bernie. I'm like, that, that's, I hope this works for the Democrats. I hope it does. But I don't know. I mean, I, I would vote for a, a uh, dimension ridden, a dementia ridden Biden over Trump. You know, it's fine. <laughs> Cause th that's the thing too, like Trump supporters, Trump supporters like are like talking about how morally corrupt Biden is. You're a fucking Trump supporter. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not know? <laughs> You're not aware, like how many accusations does he have against him? Like what, 20 or 30? Almost as many as Cosby does. <laughs> and you're gonna do you're gonna like rip Biden for two, two, really, three, whatever. He's a close talker. There's nothing wrong with that. He's creepy, but he's creepy for us. And that's all we need right now is just him and a bunch of competent people behind him. So like if there was a pandemic in the future, we'd know how to what to do about it instead of now. <sighs> so how are you guys? Uh, very well, sir. Well, very well. Thank you for being on the show. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <sighs> I almost had to go put a mask on during your set. <laughs> oh, no. I should have went longer. Sorry. The, the I, have, I have one. I'm wondering how your hair smells. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's thing, too. Like, everybody can smell your breath now with those masks on. And yeah. I hope this... In, it makes you really think uh, about what you take to, well, if you're working, it makes you think about what you're going to take for lunch. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to smell. I feel like, I feel like we're not going to cure. The rest of the day. <laughs> I feel like we're not going to cure coronavirus, but we're going to cure halitosis. That's for sure. Everybody wearing masks. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kevin, it's, uh, it's great to have you here, man. I'm, thanks. I, uh, I've, I've been wondering, you know, I, I know you're, um, you can be somewhat of, a, of an irritable guy at times. So I've been wondering mm -hmm. how you're kind of handling this whole situation um, and, uh, and just some of the underlying stupidity that we're just kind of seeing all around um, Actually, every time we leave the front door. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. The fact that we're run by stupid people <laughs> is just the worst. Like, I watched these press conferences or I don't anymore because they made me too angry. But it's just, I just, you, you listen to either what Governor Scott says or, or whatever Trump says, and you're just like, God help us. <laughs> I swear to God, if I hear the word spigot one more time, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. Because that's what Scott, Governor Scott keeps saying is the word spigot. I'm like, does he even know what a spigot is? I don't know what a spigot is. <laughs> what are they talking about, it. spigot? Like, like, a, they like want to a turn the spigot. I, yeah, I don't know. Why not just say faucet? Right? What's wrong the, with a spigot? You know, I What's don't know wrong what it is. Well, the fact that, with spigots now. The fact that uh, millennials spigots. don't even know how a spigot works because they've never <laughs> had to use one in their lifetime. What is right. what is this guy saying? He's like, I'll oh, be careful now when you put on your trousers and you go out and uh, suddenly you have well, a spigot. No. <laughs> Like he's saying how like we need to be careful when we reopen stuff. We need to slowly turn the spigot. And I'm like, uh, ah, spigot, has he even yeah. used a spigot? <laughs> yeah. yeah, because we but all no. know 
we all know, like, this is what I love about politics is you can be doing actual things and then you can use a stupid ass word like spigot to try mm-hmm. to like quantify something as complex as like the economy, you know, be like, right. y'all don't understand, we're twisting a spigot over here, okay? <laughs> all right, this ain't right. something we just, is all on or all off, it's a spigot. It's like, no, right. this is people's money and their jobs. Yeah. <laughs> They're tired it's of not a garden here. It's like, well, they if you turn on the spigot down. too hard at one time, what we're going to get is a water hammer. Now, yeah. <laughs> you don't want a water hammer. That'll just shake the shit out of your pipes. Well, yeah. <laughs> need to start I call it bullshit. Real slow like. <laughs> I, I call bullshit on all of this. This is all just like, it's like big business, big slick businessmen always are yeah. trying to like act like they're so smart politicians. Like you can't right. understand what we're doing. So we got to dumb down what we're doing. Like you got to right. understand what's going on with your business. We need to quiet the noise around your business. We just need to quiet, quiet it down. What are you talking about? Like you use these abstract things, you know, oh, the spigot. Well, okay, that's great. Um, I've been like, I've been shocked, like with the masks are kind of comical because like people are wearing the mask, but the new thing is, is to wear the mask, but not wear the mask. Wear the mask, like yeah. hanging off your chin, like not yes, over the nose to the face, just like have right. it hanging off your face somewhere. Like, yeah. I got the mask on. Yeah. And, that's not how the mask works. No. It's not how a mask works. I know there's a little confusion on the washing hand and the putting on the mask, but um, I had to laugh because a buddy of mine was in uh, Domino Park in Williamsburg taking pictures of people, and he he called he called the photo series. I'm going to post the picture on the link below. Um, and he said, you know, this is a photo series called Missing the Point, and it's all these people <laughs> like looking like assholes with the the things hanging off. And then there's this one dude who's standing there with his mask actually fitted right. And he's wearing a Long Trail Brewery (laughs) (laughs) t-shirt. I'm like, there you go. There's like the one guy who's doing it right. And he happens to have on a Long Trail t-shirt in the middle of the corner. Yeah. No. What I I love is the cigarette hole cut. So. (laughs) (laughs) Is that a thing? You wouldn't want to get that tar all over your mask, right? You just want to get it no. directly into your lungs. So you got to cut a little uh, hole and get the cigarette through there. Like, well, you know, and I think it's funny because like one of the problems that we're facing right now with the mask is like they're trying to open things up and they're saying, oh, well, maybe we'll open bars or restaurants, but you're still going to wear a mask or movie theaters, you're going to have to wear a mask. And there's a big problem is how do you like drink a Coke or have a drink with a mask on? And the answer to it is the the one item that we've shorted the last three years, which is the straw. <laughs> it's, We're a victim it's of our the own answer stupidity. to all of our problems is disposable plastic straws. <laughs> the bendy use, one, sanitized. Yes. Nobody else touches it. The plastic straw is the answer to all these problems. Jump into the ocean. We we still need the straws. <laughs> Lucky boys, we happen to have a patch the size of Texas in the Pacific Ocean of them. <laughs> <laughs> Just clean them up; they'll be fine. All right, pull yeah. them out, get them sterilized. There you go. We're, we're back in the straw. Just sterilized. Like I go to like Price Chopper, and. I go in and they have the baskets there and they say sanitized baskets, but I looked in one and there was the receipt still in one of the bo- one of the baskets. I'm like, did they sterilize the crinkled up the receipt too? What is this? What are we well, even they, doing? They are you just saying quick. something sanitized? Are you just saying well, that it's sanitized? You can't just say that it's sanitized. You actually have to clean it. Well, you know what the one thing I'm happy about, Kevin, is I have to say, is that I'm sure both of you have had the, the experience where you go, you're in a, a, a men's bathroom and you see someone either use a urinal or go into a stall and come out and not wash their hands, just leave, right. you know? And they just like walk out, they never wash their hands or whatever. And the one thing that I'm excited about post Corona is to be able to like call that person out and like broad yes. daylight and be like, you <laughs> sick bastard, you. You just wash your hands. 
<laughs> what, what is even worse is the guy that leaves goes to leave the ba- public bathroom doesn't wash his hands but still starts the dryer thing <laughs> yeah, like, dude, what what was so bad in there <laughs> you didn't wash but you started a power dryer that doesn't seem right to me uh, i think you're getting these steps uh backwards <laughs> It could be right. a sort of back bacteria plasma blast around this this bathroom right. here. <laughs> oh um, my god! So, quick question, uh, Kevin, do you feel like you have more or less to complain about now that we're in Corona time? I'm gonna say less. Okay. Honestly, because like you're in your natural um, state of being. Yeah, I don't have to. I never have to shake hands again. <laughs> I don't miss so that good. at all. Always, I'm not going to miss shaking hands. I'm not going to do it ever again. I'm done. I'm done. I'm so glad that's happening. Uh, I work from home now, which is good because I hate some of my coworkers. So that helps. <laughs> I but hope now, you guys are watching like, out there. <laughs> yeah, let's hope so. Um, but like, I realized though, like as the weeks pass, I realized that, you know, while I like working from home, I still don't like the job that I do. (laughs) So like the allure of working from home has worn off. So yeah, as soon as this pandemic's over, I'm gonna look for something. No, not even look for something else. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I just, I don't know. But yeah, I I like working from home. And yeah, it's, it's been good. And I never have to wash hands again. Shake hands again. I mean, I still have to wash hands. What the fuck? <laughs> well, if you don't leave your house, if you don't leave your house, there's going to be nobody there like calling to call you out on it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> exactly. Uh, I, yeah, I also wanted to ask uh, other than work, uh, how is it affecting you not going out and performing? Uh, your situation is a little different having the. Uh, having a podcast and still having your yeah some type of release that way but how is it right. without seeing a crowd sitting in front of you are you uh are you having a hard time with that i hate it i i really hate it i don't know if i you know what i hate more than that though are the people saying that stand-up comedy is not going to be a thing anymore oh like, fuck you fuck you <laughs> that, that that you laugh because what none of those people realize is Nobody's doing stand up for the fucking money. <laughs> like, right. None of us are there because it pays well. Like, anybody right. well, see, who performs stand up is there because it's a goddamn passion. Right. Because they care. Right. Because they want to right. do it and it's part of their their psychological therapy. I, right. I'm going it's... in on a decade and a half of doing s- stand up. And yeah. like, I remember when stand up wasn't cool. Like, right. I feel like a lot of people don't remember that. Like, stand-up never yeah. used to be cool. And I, I it used that. to be, like, a thing that, like, you did because it was... In New York, you did stand-up because it was, it was uh, like, Americano. It was, like, timeless New York. It was New York. Mm-hmm. So, like, in the same way, like, people say, like, you're going to short Broadway. Broadway's not going to come back. Of course Broadway will come back. Yeah. Because Broadway is Broadway and mm-hmm. it's not going anywhere and it's going to take a lot more than a virus or an economic collapse yeah. or anything to completely obliterate the arts like i right. mean people think that but that's very narrow-sighted because the thing is is you have so many people yeah. who are passionate so many people who know the book i know people who are music directors that i often think some of these guys i've worked with are really talented who know the books i always think if just one of these guys survived yeah if one of them survived like saying this is apocalyptic show tunes and broadway musicals would survive because that's the level of passion of so many people so stand-up will i understand but the biggest thing that i've always said about stand-up which is interesting is it's boom and bust and it's boom to bust it booms and bust it booms and bust it was booming and it was booming so hard pre this that that just like the stock market and every other thing that's going on right now is the bust is a little bit uh, harder because the boom was that much larger than it has been in the past, you know? Right. Right. Well, but I, I but still it's think not going around. No, 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 no. 
No, it was the uh, it followed the same track the economy did, right? It was right. just climbing and climbing ever since 2008, and all of a sudden, yeah. mid March 2020, and it just boom. yeah. And uh, no, I think we'll, like, have a, we'll have 2008. A you see Jim Gaff again for ten bucks, you know, right? Yep. In, in in New York, you know what I mean? It's just like it's same thing, you know. In the 50s, you'd see uh, Marlon Brando on Broadway for a nickel, you know. It's yep. like there, there's things it is tied together, but the one thing about it, as long as we have a cell phone and a brick wall. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. <laughs> yep, we'll that's always right. have a comedy show. We ain't yeah, going but, nowhere. <laughs> but like to replace stand up for now, like I had I had switched my podcast to once a week before the pandemic. But then during the pandemic, I'm like Oh, I have to do something. So I've, I'm putting out a podcast episode Monday through Friday. Oh, that's awesome. And I'm going to keep doing that once this is all over. Because why not? So, and I'm doing, I, I'm trying to start up a YouTube channel and putting videos on that too. But I don't have much time because I work. So Why really, are you doing I, YouTube, Kevin? You got to do TikTok, right? I'm not on it. I'm on TikTok. I don't know anything about it. Make tag attack like on TikTok. Oh, I'm on TikTok. I'll have to write that down. My lovely assistant will be following you yeah, by the end of the right. day. Yeah, please do. She loves that. Yeah. I don't Kevin's all over TikTok. TikTok. I am. He's all over TikTok. Because <laughs> Gary Vaynerchuk said to get onto TikTok, so I got onto TikTok. <laughs> I that, to like, that is amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, TikTok kills me. All those stupid I, songs, man. <laughs> yeah, I hate. I when I look at TikTok now, though, it's I don't know if it's the algorithm or whatever, but I don't even have a dog. But they're all dog videos now. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, think, I almost want to. I almost want to buy a husky because of all the husky <laughs> TikTok videos. That's some great marketing, I guess they got going yeah. on over there at TikTok. It must be a con- with the huskies right <laughs> we're, instead of like we're gonna have like kevin be uh be like kevin exotic and just get him a bunch <laughs> of hard <laughs> siberian dogs that he can perform with <laughs> like welcome oh, God, back yeah. to the program this is stand up and dogs <laughs> right right <laughs> we have to get chewy.com on that the sponsor yeah <laughs> They're probably the ones that are making sure that only dog videos show up on your TikTok. I that's right. I agree. It's probably, probably yeah. conspiracy. It, at least it's not dance videos anymore. I don't really care to see anybody dancing in a video to a song I can't stand in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it's bad I feel, enough when you like, like this song. I, <laughs> it's like I have to flip through the TikToks to see the because like what they're like young girls like dancing. I'm like I, no. This this feels illegal. I have to I have to switch. <laughs> I have to flip the TikTok away so we not look at this. This this it feels wrong. If it feels wrong, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, I have yet to. I've never been on TikTok. It seems uh, mm. I didn't know Gary Vaynerchuk uh, was uh, was saying that you should get on. Oh that. yeah. This is- do you know um, who he is? I do. I him? love Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah. 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 He's great. Yeah, I think I, I what I like about Gary Vaynerchuk is he's like he's like um, uh, what's the guy the other big self help uh, Tony Robin. You know yeah, yeah. how like Tony Robin has that way of just being like we're gonna cut the shit and guess what you suck and guess what I'm the shit and guess what you are fucking your life up. <laughs> And yep. like that's what I feel like Vanderchuk does, and Tony Robbins does so well. Yeah, Vanderchuk though, I have to k- say the one thing that I call BS on Vanderchuk is that even he's a he's an inspirational guy, done very well, very savvy entrepreneur. But when you when you try to like actually like pitch his whole like claim to fame, it's much like kind of pitching Trump. And the fact is like Gary Vanderchuk. He took his family's measly $4 million a year wine business and turned it into a $50 million a year wine business in just five years. It's like he started with a $4 million a year wine business. <laughs> like right. that's not like a total rags to riches like story. No. It's like, 
It's like Trump being like, Trump has a billion dollar real estate empire. He only inherited a half a billion dollars uh, in like the seventies. You know what I mean? It's like, so I think like Vanderchuk, I think he worked very, really hard. Like he has claimed the fame yeah. is he didn't take one day off in his twenties, which right. either makes you really smart or makes you a total moron. I don't know right. which one, um, you know, but, uh, but yeah, I like Vanderchuk. Uh, maybe yeah. we could get him on the program. Hickory. <laughs> line, line him up to guests. <laughs> start, start sending tell out the email. I'm going to tell him a little something about a little thing called a social media strategy you hard on. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I get him to ship me a couple cases of wine too while he's at it. Yeah, and I'll teach you about wine while I'm at it there, Gary. I'll, 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 I'll switch over from beer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we can get a, a, a what's his media company vander media something yeah. like that vander media we can yeah. get a hashtag vanda media sponsorship from old gary yeah. vanderchuk we will start yeah. plugging your wine.com bullshit or whatever the hell it is <laughs> we'll even talk about how much we like things we don't like like un oak chardonnay and uh, yeah. <laughs> how a 2016 yeah, yeah. Cabernet Sauvignon just hits the spot after you've been up all night doing coke with a prostitute. There's nothing like starting your day with a 2016 Cabernet Sauvignon harvested straight from the valleys of Napa, California. You are welcome, Gary Vanderchuk. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> you've been pitching this wine wrong the whole time. Right. He's got to get the Woolen Milk Comedy Club on it. Put a big old sign out front. Sorry, Long Trail. We, we still yeah, love yeah. you, but yeah. <laughs> Gary Vanderchuk comes up with yeah, yeah. money first. I can't say I won't take it. <laughs> uh, close to the end here. Uh, before we go, I wanted to say, Kevin, I've been meaning to tell you for a while that it's hard to say, but my mom's a big fan of yours, and uh, she's been asking you when you when you were going to be on the show. And I was like, "Well, mom, calm down. I want to make sure things are smooth before we bring Kevin on. You know, I don't right. want him ranting about how shitty my show is on his podcast for the next week. That would really I need content though. <laughs> well, we'll feel free. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was one of those moments. Like, Mom. Did I yell at your mom the one time she was in the audience? Uh, I was that your sister? Probably my my mom's very. Uh, I find a hard, have a hard time imagining that uh, Mama Hickory would ever uh, speak out at a show. But my well, sister I remember we were at a show now. once, and and somebody was like heckling you. Like you had your family there, and they were heckling you. Yeah, that would definitely would have been my sister then. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's what was. She's, right. she's the cool. only one in the family balls enough to talk <laughs> out during comedy show. Right, yeah, I know. You're okay. like, I'm glad I spent time to write a set, sis, so you could heckle me. But right. like, Kyle's mom has had some good ideas. Like, she had the idea of, of him starting a podcast called Hickory Attacks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. He's like, I don't know. I think it might work. <laughs> oh, my, my beautiful assistant just reminded me. No, during that show, that was my aunt from uh, Florida. And, uh, oh, right. And Hickory, I, the Drunk and Underwhelming, was a young magi at that point, And he was performing more traditional stand-up. And right. my aunt uh, thought that my stand-up set was a, a direct dialogue between me and her. And right. every oh, time... Right. I, I I either set something up or delivered a punchline. She responded to it like we were having a fucking conversation. Yep. Yep. I remember that now. You're right. <laughs> Audrey, if you're right. watching, I'm sorry to put you on blast. <laughs> but, yeah, that was that was one of the most miserable stand-up sets of my goddamn life. I, I know I was there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That probably has a lot a lot more to do with me. Uh you know, drinking a lot on stage and, and doing rope tricks <laughs> and it. jokes, but that's right. But you can't be too hard on yourself, Hickory, because uh, <laughs> I remember I, I remember that night of um, of like and what what I love too is the heckle that comes precisely on the punchline. 
That's the <laughs> best time. That's comedic timing you can't teach, where it's like, how do you hit the punchline? <laughs> like, right. Like, she just knew instinctively to wait those two beats from the setup to the punch. Yeah, it yeah it's incredible. like, oh, sounds like someone, he might be saying something funny right now. <laughs> 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 that it's that well, hickory blood. I don't know. We're <laughs> we're we're funny. I'm glad your mom likes me though. That that that's reassuring. Oh yeah, she's a fan. She uh, that's good. she honestly said she can't wait to come out and see a show with you live. Um, so that's uh that's exciting. Yeah. I well, can't let's wait. Let's get her a T-shirt, Kevin. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you go on to my uh, podcast and look at the notes. You can actually click on the link and buy a McTigard Attack podcast T-shirt. Nice. I will have to get my. Uh, you should have let me know last week. I would have gotten her one for Mother's Day. <laughs> oh, uh, no! There's always next Mother's Day. <laughs> That's right. Birthday. Maybe Christmas. All of them. Just get it for all of them. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, close to the end. Uh, Yep. Colin, anything you'd like to say before we uh, hold our peace until next week, my friend? No, uh, I'd just like to say that it's great to see you, Kevin. Glad that um, you're uh, hanging in there uh, during mm -hmm. the um, during all this uh, debacle. I know that, um, um, you know, that uh, this is kind of a standstill on a lot of stuff, the engine room. Um, and all the other shows that you perform at and host yeah. and Salt Hill and, and uh, you know, uh, just, in, just to recap on kind of what we were saying, you know, I think we got a really wonderful, um, you know, stand-up community here. And right. I think that, you know, that I don't think it's going anywhere. I think it's trying times on everyone, but I think that uh, luckily we've solidified a, a strong enough community uh, in, in the new, you know, New England area that, um, you know, it's, uh, it's great to have everybody still connected, being digital for now and excited right. to see you performing live at the engine room and here and, and elsewhere. Yep. So thanks for being right. on the program, buddy, and uh, we'll see you soon. Yep. Thanks for having me. It was a good time. Uh, Kevin, not that you'd have, uh, you know, a solidified upcoming show date, but <laughs> any, uh, any upcoming things you're doing, uh, please let our our followers know about where they can find you on social media, where they can find your podcast. Oh. Uh, if they can write to you personally for advice, um, you know, yeah. that, that type of. Sure. Like my, um, on social media, pretty much anywhere it's at McTigger attack. I, they're all pretty much the same handle. So look me up there or you can find me on, uh, I have a YouTube channel, which is under my name. And then so is the, under Kevin McTaggart. Right. Okay. And then um, there's the podcast that comes out Monday through Friday. Nice. Available, which is also on YouTube and anywhere you listen to podcasts. Is that um, on your YouTube channel as well? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so please. Yeah, but yeah, no shows right now. <laughs> <laughs> I wish Other the end of the show was coming back sometime soon, but I'm not sure about that one. And I hope the open mics never return. But that's just me saying. Because <laughs> open mics are terrible. <laughs> uh, anyway. I, I'm honestly hoping your next date is another appearance on the Hickory the Drunken Under Quarantine show. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you've been phenomenal. Uh, so Thanks. please, everybody, uh, follow, follow Colin Doyle and Woolen Mill Comedy Club on Facebook, other social media. Follow Mr. Kevin McTaggart the McTaggart Attack podcast on social media, uh, Podbean, uh, you know, the other 400 apps that host podcasts. There's too many to name. Um, and I'll leave you on this. We have a big announcement. Uh, this will be the first time I've announced it publicly. The Woolen Mill Comedy Club presents the Hickory the Drunken Under Quarantine show next week, Memorial Day, 525. We're moving to an hour. Uh, We've been trying to keep it to about half an hour. Um, we've decided that's not enough time. We're moving to a full hour. Next week, we add a third co-host, Mr. G.W. Foley, and our guest next Ooh. week is Dickie Betts. So nice. Uh, big show plans. Um, it's going to be a great time. 
I hope you out there are enjoying the show. Uh, please write us uh, at hickorytdau at gmail. If you want to write in uh, any comments we can tackle, any questions, concerns, comments, or inquiries, uh, please follow us at both Comedy Club, Willem Mill Comedy Club, and the Hickory of the Drunk and Underwhelming page on Facebook. And please, all of you, remember, stay drunk, stay underwhelming, and stay safe. <laughs>